welcome back to Theme Time. I'm Rob, the DIY Theme Guy, making things with more details. Ooh! There's a lot of things I could show you, but today I'm going to set those all aside, put them on a shelf. This shelf. <laughs> That's not true at all. I'm actually going to take everything up there off of the shelf so I can better show you how the shelf was made. It's designed to look like a hefty wooden beam rafter helping to hold the building together. Like a joist. A joist. Not to be confused with I-beam. <laughs> but I joist. This hefty wooden timber construction given the illusion of being built with trenels and trenels and tree nails and mortars and tenon and... <laughs> isn't actually a 5 by 20 slab of heavy wood I nailed in the wall. Duh! That would be stupid. And nearly impossible for me. Without help. This is actually constructed in much the same way... Much the same way as I demonstrated this wooden post in episode 1. If you haven't seen that yet, go back and give it a watch. Otherwise, you're going to be pretty lost in the techniques I use to make this to use on this. <laughs> because I'm not going to demonstrate the same thing twice. At least not yet. Not until I run out of projects and i got to keep you people interested in the channel. <laughs> so, once I get everything taken off the shelf, I'll give you a look from above. So you can have an idea of what holds it all together. I'll get a ladder. From the view that you have now, you can see from above the exposed framework making up this shelf. Now, before I constructed the framework, I measured out the area that the shelf was going to utilize against the wall, cut away the drywall in those sections only, where the framework was going to set into place. I did that in order to have this framework of the shelf adhere directly, flat up against whatever the framework was that made up the wall. The structural components being cinder block or stud, in this case, it was a combination of both very uh, strangely across the whole thing and ununiform. Hey, hey, don't get me started. Anyway, I made the framework of the shelf in three different sections to cover the entire length of the wall. That was to cut down on the weight of each section of framework so I could lift it into place by myself and adhere it against the wall structure. You can also see there's electric up here. <laughs> so let's take a look back at making the framework, getting it on the wall, and finishing the project to be a finished project. Here you can see the cutout area of drywall, showing a basic idea of the stud placement inside the wall, along with the surprising cinder block construction above the window. After constructing each piece of framework, I started by installing the two corner sections first. Then I completed the length of the wall by installing the center section. As I installed each one, I made sure they were level, both lengthwise and depth, so that nothing would roll off the shelf or all the way to one side. Whoa, whoa, wait, go back. What are those two things I used to attach it to the wall? Well, maybe. But I'll tell you one thing, it ain't gonna fall off the wall, Doc. <laughs> Here's the framing after being skinned with ripped and weathered wood panels. Just like the post below. Oh, oh, wait, wait a minute, go back again. What's that? Oh, that's a little sloppy. Well, that area won't really be seen because I eventually plan to cover it with a corbel. However, this area will stay visibly exposed. So something's got to be done about that. A little bit of wood putty should do the trick. Or if you're like me and ran out of wood putty and are too cheap and lazy to go to the store, use drywall compound. Yeah, that ought to work. Hey, once you paint it, with all the scenic treatment and give it a coat of lacquer, it's going to clean up pretty nice. And no one will ever know. Ah, once I completed the shelf's construction, I cut out these simple panels to serve as lids for what is essentially three boxes I have screwed into the side of the wall. Nice part about them being boxes with removable lids, I can open them up and access the wiring should I need to get to it. It also gives you a place to put things, storage, on the shelf, in the shelf, up on the wall, out of way, out of sight, like a secret stash. Well, not that. I, I'm high enough already. 
But these panels were made out of simple plywood that I got for free off the side of the road. That's why there's small blemishes in it, like nail holes, screw holes, dents, dings, cracks, and this one nail remaining that was far too complicated to try to remove, so I left it in for added character that nobody's ever going to see. Because even though I painted it and gave it a simple wood grain look, it doesn't matter. Once there's things setting on it and you're eight feet underneath, you're never going to be able to see it from the top. So this is just to have a surface for things to set on. Keep the shelf closed. Ooh, levitating is hard on my back. Anyway, that's how I made the shelf. Construction, finishing, everything to make it look real nice. Yeah, of course there's a lot more to this adventurously interesting wall I'm going to demonstrate how I did to you, but I think we'll save that for another theme time. After I get some painkillers. Ooh, yeah.